Hey guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at a statistical learning method for classification called logistic regression. In a nutshell, I would say logistic regression is linear regression, but for classification problems and supervised learning. I created a video on linear regression not too long ago. Check it out if you already haven't. The link will be down in the description below or on the info card in the top. So why can't we use linear regression in classification problems? So consider the multi-class classification problem of determining the weather as sunny, cloudy, partially cloudy, or rainy. And say that we've encoded them with values 0, 1, 2, and 3 respectively. However, this would imply that the difference between sunny and cloudy is the same as that of rainy and partially cloudy, and like so. This doesn't really make any sense, so encoding it in this way for multi-class classification in linear regression is ruled out. Well, then a question that comes up is, if we can't use it for multi-class classification, what about the simplest case, like for binary classification? Can't we use linear regression for such predictions? Well, even for binary classification, some predicted values may lie outside 0 and 1, rendering their predictions useless. Instead of predicting the values of the response variable as 0 or 1, we will predict the probability of the response variable being 1 or 0. We cannot use linear regression techniques since our regression line may predict some values below 0 and others above 1, which makes no sense. We instead want to make sure that the curve fitted makes the range of response variable y belong to 0 and 1, and the covariate x belonging to, well, negative infinity to positive infinity. So yeah, logistic regression. The name logistic regression is a misnomer. This statistical method is not used to model regression problems. We use it to solve classification. The term logistic refers to the log odds probability that is modeled. The term odds is defined as the ratio of the probability that an event occurs to the probability that it doesn't occur. Let's consider the conditional probability y is equal to 1 given x, abbreviated as pfx. Note that 1 here is not the number but rather the class, or category. So as mentioned before, we need to model a probability using a curve where the predictor domain x can be anything and the range of pfx, or the conditional probability that y is true given x, is between 0 and 1. There are many ways to accomplish this. Logistic regression uses the logistic function, actually a sigmoid function to be specific, to accomplish this. So using this function, we get an s-shaped curve. Let us write this function in a more admissible form. The left term is the log odds, or the logit. So a graph of the logit versus x gives us a linear curve. So let's talk about parameter estimation. The goal of learning in machine learning is basically to estimate parameters in order to make predictions. The parameters in the equation of a two-class classification in logistic regression is the beta hat vector, as in the log odds equation. Like how the least squares method is used to estimate parameters in linear regression and fit a model, logistic regression uses the maximum likelihood method for parameter estimation. In MLE, we take all the training data and split it up into two groups based on their labels, say they're 0 and 1. For every sample with label 1, the goal is to estimate the vector beta hat such that p of x hat is as close to 1 as possible. For the sample group with the label 0, the goal is to estimate beta hat such that p of x hat is as close to 0 as much as possible. In other words, 1 minus p of x hat should be as close to 1 as it can possibly be. Mathematically, for every sample with label 1, we want to estimate beta hat such that the product of all conditional probabilities of class 1 samples is as close to 1 as possible. This is the maximum value of the product. Similarly, for the samples labeled 0, we want to estimate beta hat such that the product of the complement of their conditional probabilities is as close to 1 as possible. That is, the maximum value. 
Note that xi here represents the feature vector for the eight sample. On combining these requirements, we want to find the beta parameters such that the product of both of these products is maximum over all elements of the dataset. This function that we need to optimize is called the likelihood function. We can then combine the products. Now we can take the log likelihood and convert this into a summation. So here the small l represents the log likelihood. Let's substitute pfx with its exponent form. We now group the coefficients of yi. Continue simplification of both terms. And now we end up with the final form of the log likelihood function, which is to be optimized. The goal is to find the value of beta that maximizes this function. This final likelihood equation consists of non-algebraic terms like logarithms and exponents. Such equations are also called transcendental equations and cannot be computed exactly. However, we could use numerical methods to approximate a solution. So for now, we can consider the newton raphson approach. This involves the first two terms of the Taylor series expansion. We need to compute this for t iterations, and then beta will eventually converge to the approximate coefficient vector. The newton raphson equation involves computing the gradient with respect to beta. So let's determine this gradient. We bring the gradient symbol into the summation as a derivative of sum is the same as the sum of derivatives. The same applies within the brackets. We multiply the second term with e to the power of negative beta xi. Now we replace the exponent term with the corresponding conditional probability term. And now we take xi common to get the final form of the log likelihood gradient. So this is the numerator term of the newton raphson equation. Now we compute the denominator term, called the Hessian matrix. This is a matrix of second-order derivatives with respect to beta coefficients. It is essentially the gradient of the previous equation. We bring the gradient into the summation, remove y as it is independent of beta, replace p of x with its beta equivalent, apply the gradient, take the negative sign out, and replace it back with pfx. Now that we have the gradient vector and the Hessian matrix, let's try to convert them both into their matrix representation. So the gradient vector becomes x transpose times y minus y hat. The Hessian matrix is negative x transpose times p times 1 minus p times x. Now if we take p times 1 minus p as the diagonal matrix, w, then the Hessian matrix becomes negative x transpose wx. Plugging these two terms into the newton raphson equation, we get a final form. Now we just have to execute this for a number of iterations t until the value of beta converges. Once the coefficients have been estimated, we can then plug in the values of some feature vector x to estimate the probability of it belonging to a specific class. We should choose a threshold hyperparameter above which it is class 1 and below which it is class 0. Note that the newton raphson method is just one method of approximation. We could have used a secant, molars, or any other appropriate numerical method. So that's logistic regression for you. I hope this video cleared some things up. If you like what you saw, show some love with a like and subscribe for more awesome content. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.